Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim and today we'll be doing another uh, tape maintenance tutorial on cassette deck or cassette tapes and uh, this is one of the uh, situations I find myself in a lot uh, being a collector of cassettes where I sometimes buy um, medium to large size collections and or people give me tapes uh, knowing that I am a collector and invariably I come across tapes like this where you get a really really good quality um, cassette but unfortunately and of course you've got uh, you can buy replacement um, jewel cases for them um, or cassette cases and un invariably they're missing the uh, the J card the uh, uh, especially if it's pre-recorded store-bought tape um, it's nice to have the original uh, J card, but uh, that's not always impossible, or not always possible. So, uh, in this case, what I do, um, instead of having to just store it in a clear kit tape or just, you know, uh, writing up a, a J card or whatever, I like to at least match the J card to the tape that I have. And this is one of the techniques that I employ. Um, you can try to source a, a, a replacement J card, an original, uh, but uh, like LPs, there's different, uh, different uh, pressings or different uh, versions of the same uh, item with different uh, cover art and, and such, depending on who's releasing the, uh, the cassette. In this case, it's an MCA cassette. So uh, what I like to do is go on to uh, Discogs which has a, an amazing database of uh, both J cards and actually if you've got tapes where the uh, labels have fallen off, they also, uh, nine times out of ten, will also have uh, labels that you can print, up, print off and then uh, you know, replace the, uh, the original labels that are either trashed or have fallen off because of dried glue or, or got damaged or whatever, but the tape is still in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll, uh, I'll go onto my computer here and uh, and we'll go through what I do to uh, replace um, the J card. So I, I just use a, uh, a bubble jet printer in my case, but uh, laser jet actually works a lot better. So if you have uh, uh, an office or a, uh, a laser jet printer at home that is, is color capable, um, that probably will take uh, do a much better uh, job of the images. Um, I'm not super keen i mean i do have access to a laser jet at work but i'm not going to print stuff off at work and on company time or whatever um so i just use my home uh, home printer to uh, make up the j cards that are missing and then if i find it again i can always take this one out and, uh, and replace it with the original so the tape that we're going to work with here today is uh, i found this uh, elton john greatest hits tape and it's in spectacular shape i've listened to it it's in beautiful sounds great and of course I want to keep it in, as part of my collection and display it with all my other tapes you know sort of in a shelf kind of an arrangement and I don't want it just to show a clear tape I want to be able to see you know um, what the original J card looks like so I can easily find the tape I'm looking for so this is uh, one trick that I do and it's certainly not the only way of doing it but uh, let's uh, let's delve into this All right, we're starting here in uh, Google Chrome, and uh, what we're going to do is go to discogs.com, and uh, that's where we're going to find all of our J cards that we're uh, trying to replace. So here is uh, we're going to type in Elton John in the search menu, and we're going to type in. Uh, uh, greatest hits and then just so we can uh, narrow down the search because we're looking for cassettes we'll just type in cassette and in this case uh, with the tape that I have it's actually a Canadian uh, uh, print it was manufactured by MCA Records Canada so um, to narrow down all of the you can see all the different versions of uh, greatest hits quite a few and different uh, covers and, and the whole nine yards. So what we want to do is get to sort of the same country, I guess, as the, uh, as the tape that I have. So we're going to narrow it down to 
Canada, which had, I think had 45 offerings. And uh, I did a little bit of a search in advance. And this one here, so if you click on various ones, you can see the styles of the, uh, the J cards on all of these. Uh, this is the one I'm actually looking for. It has the same numbering and everything. And you'll see a little clip art here up on the, uh, on the cassette. So this is a Canadian one, and it's uh, MCAC 37215, which coincides with uh, the nomenclature on the cassette that I have. And then you're going to go more images. And right there, you have the various uh, covers. And so what we're going to do is I want to do the whole thing because it's a, it's a flat uh, scan of the, the J card. I don't really care about the inside. I'm just uh, looking at the outside uh, the J cards in this case. And I don't believe, I think this is white on the inside anyway for the original. And I do have the original here. I'm just uh, showing you, uh, what I'll do is show you a comparison of what the original looks like and what the printed looks like at the very end. So I'm just showing you the technique here. So uh, all you do is you go right click and you go copy image. And then what we're going to do, we're going to open up uh, Microsoft Publisher here. And as you can see, I can go with an eight and a half inch uh, by 11 uh, new template or a new page. Uh, but I just happen to have, have this one uh, file that I created. It's called J card template with labels. And really all it is is an eight and a half by 11 inch blank with uh, two um, basically scanned copies of, uh, of the labels on, uh, on cassettes. So here it is opening up. And I just keep these cassettes off to the side just in case if I need to make labels for cassette, I just drag these over into the uh, printable area. And then I would go over to that Discogs, the same place where I got the, uh, the J card and you would see there's labels and then I would superimpose them because these are sized correctly for when I print them out. That is the size of the labels for the cassettes. So that's why those are off to the side. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do that if all you're doing is J cards. Um, so uh, I copied the, uh, the J card that we're interested in. So in this case now we're just going to paste. And you can see how the orientation is incorrect. Uh, the reason is, what I like to use is, well, I could actually do it on this side too. Uh, usually what I do is I'll rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then I will line it up to the edge so you can see the zero there. Uh, boom. And then uh, what I know is if you take a ruler and measure the uh, front of the uh, uh, plastic cassette case, they're exactly four inches across. So you can see that the graphic here is about four and a half inches. So I need to scale it down to exactly four inches. And when it disappears, there we go, four inches. And I don't like to print right on the edge because there isn't a buffer of the area of the, the printable area on my particular printer that it doesn't allow you to print. So I go within the confines of these, uh, these lines here, which, um, I can use it to line things up and there I go into file and in my case I've got an Epson printer it's uh, one of those uh, mega tank printers it does a really good job and I, uh, I have really white really good uh, cardstock kind of uh, paper that I print in it and uh, it just pops when you uh, when you print these things out so um, what I do is I make sure my printer properties I look for um, high quality setting. You don't want to do it in, uh, in draft or standard. You want to get as high quality of an image just so it looks, uh, looks the best it can be. And then uh, we go OK. And then I'm going to hit print here. And then we'll uh, go over to the printer and see it printing off. So here we go. Print. And there we have it. It's uh, the print job has been sent to my uh, nice little Epson printer here. The model is ET2750, but any good uh, printer will do. Like I say, a laser jet will be a lot better, probably. And uh, here it comes. 
And there's the printed J card. And you will see that is the, uh, the actual J card that I pulled off that tape. So uh, very good, uh, very good quality color, but you can tell by the, uh, you know, it is a bubble jet because it isn't quite as uh, bright and uh, doesn't pop as much as the original card. But you know what? Uh, I don't really care about that. If I did want to really make it pop, then of course I'd go laser jet. So um, next what we'll do is we'll take a pair of scissors and we'll cut that out and we'll warp to that uh, part as soon as I've done that. And there you have it. So uh, that's the printed copy and that's the original J card. And as you can see, it actually has all the same uh, labels, MCAC 327. Uh, 215 same as on this one so it's uh, which of course is on the cassette I don't know if you can see it here but that's the number right there that coincides now it's very rare that you'll actually uh, find every tape that you're looking for to have the same numbering but uh, I like to have the original uh, as I said there's about 10 different covers uh, available for this type this uh, greatest hits tape um, so you want to have the one that you know, matches the best, I guess, is, is the best way to go. That's what, that's the way I like to do it, but um, some people probably don't care about that. You just want to have a label so you can find your tape easily on your shelf. So uh, obviously with the printout, you have um, the holes here for um, these little things that protrude into the cassette uh, case. And so what I do is I just get a really good uh, quality um, sort of razor knife and uh, in this case what I can do is just uh, basically I have a nice cutting board here so I don't have to worry about cutting into a table or anything like that and uh, I'll line it up and just do, do a sort of a free hand around the, the hole here and it's basically you just want to get it so that it, you know, it kind of looks quasi-professional and allows the prongs on the cassette case shell to uh, poke through. So that's one. You can see how that just pops out nicely. Got a little remnants there that we cut off with the razor. And then we'll do the other side. And then the other part, of course, is getting the, uh, the bends. There's two ways you can kind of do it, and I kind of just free eye, eyeball it with uh, with a really nice metal ruler to uh, bend this so that it fits properly into the uh, into the jewel case or the cassette case. There we go. So now you can see the holes are right through, just like on the original. And uh, here's where we take our ruler. And then what I do is I line the ruler up with the, uh, the fold marks that you can actually see on the scan that's printed out. And a nice metal straight edge ruler is good and handy here. And of course you can do your folds for the uh, spine of the J card. And then I do the other side here. And there we go. And now that will fit nicely into the uh, jewel case. And, and there you have it. Elton John Greatest Hits uh, by MCA. And now uh, if I've lost my J card or I have it or I got a tape that doesn't have a J card, that's a quick and dirty way of making a J card um, for a tape that's missing one. So, um, and as you can see, it looks very possible. And like I say, if, if you did that with a laser jet, it would even be more possible. I just use normal paper stock, but if you got card stock, then of course you can make it uh, match up to be just as thick as the standard um, stock on these things. And you see the spine. I should have showed you the spine on the other one. And of course, it looks that's the original uh, J card. And on this one, 
I got stickers on the sides of my key. That's just how I uh, I catalog all my uh, my tapes on the database or whatever. So you can see there's the spine with this my little hand drawn sticker on it. And there we have it, a tape with a, that looks as almost as good as new, and uh, that way it uh, fits into your collection a little bit better. So hopefully this helps. Um, I do have another method that I, or a similar method, and I showed you part of it with the, uh, the file that I pulled up, and that is being able to, if you have missing labels, I'll probably do another video on uh, how I do the labeling. It, it requires some a little bit, bit of intricate cutting, but it's not that difficult, and it's just as easy as that, and uh, you can patch up some old uh, tapes where labels have gone missing or got damaged or destroyed or people have written on them in pen, which is annoying and you want to have it look nice in your collection, um, I can, I'll do another tape on that one. So thank you for watching. Uh, quick and dirty. Hopefully this helps.